Okay, so in this lecture, we're gonna talk about how to combine animations into one file. There's a few different ways you can do this. There's a lot of students asking how they can combine animations that they've created into one file if they've decided later on that they wanna combine animations just to kind of have uh, a lot, kind of an animation they can share uh, across the board or just have one file with everything in it. And I'm gonna cover a couple of those different ways and some of the pros and cons of each method. And you can kind of choose which one is gonna work the best for you. I find that the Atom version of the export import is going to be the probably the easiest and probably the most universal regarding uh, whatever type of animation you're trying to combine into one file. In this case, I have the Unreal Mannequin uh, and I brought in an idle animation and I'm going to bring in a walk animation into the same file. So to show you how to use the Atom export, you're just gonna go into File Atom, Export Animation, it's gonna bring up some options and then basically you're going to kind of select uh, the all cubable channel, so everything that's selected. So in this viewport, if you click the uh, selection tool and you select all controls it'll select everything and that's what you're going to want to use to export all the animation that we have on this idle uh, or whatever animation you might be using uh, for the channels I just select all keyable and the time range you can select all it doesn't really matter uh, what you select if there's no animation here but if you want to basically kind of make sure that it's dialed in you can move the timeline to 31 and then you can do the time range uh, for the time slider which is active or you can also do a start and end time frame if you want to dial in exactly the, the, the frame range that you want uh, but I find that the default is perfectly fine and you can export that animation and we'll kind of show a little more of how that works and why that matters on those settings and when we bring in the second animation. So I'm going to bring in a walk cycle and I'm going to bring it in actually a little bit later in the timeline so you can kind of see visually uh, what this does and the advantages of kind of giving a little bit of a buffer and just also just let you see uh, the animation coming in and out of the frame of the time slider a lot easier. So what I also like to do is I kind of like to bookend the animations. So what I would recommend is, you know, kind of giving a little bit of a buffer uh, between the first and the second animation and typically the only reason why you want to do that is you might want to make this animation a little bit slower or you might might want to make some changes and so just giving a little bit of uh, leeway there to adjust the animation uh, tends to work better when you start adding a lot of animations into one scene but it also allows you to uh, kind of visually see where the break is in the animations. So in the graph editor, you can basically see here that there's just a flat curve uh, kind of bookending the first and the last pose because the uh, walk cycle at frame 100 is gonna have a completely different pose than the idle. So I just like to just key all at frame, the uh, one frame before we bring in the animation. So what you're gonna wanna do next is select your animation that you want to bring in. In this case, I've already exported out a walk cycle and I'm going to bring in that walk cycle into the uh, scene. So this is the exporter. That's why I got that error. If you go into file and then you import the animation, you can then select. In this case, it's already been selected. Uh, but I want to show you visually something that happens. If you select a different animation, um, it's out automatically going to read that atom file and tell you how many frames of animation were stored in that file uh, and, set, and then allow you to pick where you're going to bring that animation into the scene. So for this walk cycle, it's a 32 frame animation starting on frame 0 and ending on frame 32. So if I want that animation essentially to come back in to this scene, I would need to kind of set this up with roughly the same amount of frames, 33 frames, and I want it to start at one frame 100 and end basically uh, at the same time that the animation is that I'm bringing in. So once you have those uh, selections made, uh, make sure that you don't have the replace uh, option box checked or you're gonna lose your animation uh, previously in this timeline. So once you have that, you just go ahead and click apply and then you're gonna see your animation is automatically brought into the scene. And now we've got our walk cycle and we also have our idle animation all in the same scene. And that really is the easiest way to bring in animations in and out 
of Maya, but there are some other workarounds and some other ways that you can do this. If you want to utilize the Unreal Art rigging tools, uh, there are some other options that you can use and you actually might want to use those if you're exporting animations out of Unreal that you may have uh, bought or purchased or if you're using the Paragon assets, you may want to bring in some animations additionally into the timeline. So let me show you kind of how that works and some of the pros and cons of using this export import option in the uh, Unreal GUI. So for import mocap, this is a great way to bring in uh, any animation or motion capture that you have that you might have gotten from Unreal or any FBX uh, animations that were made for the mannequin. And you're going to maybe want a time where you want to also add these animations into this timeline. Um, so for example, if I want to add another animation at frame 300, in this case, I'm just going to add another walk cycle to this. And I'm going to show you kind of the uh, difficulties of why uh, using this tool can kind of be a little bit, uh, a little bit messy. Um, so in this case, we want to offset uh, the animation uh, to frame 300. Um, what you're going to want to do is point to the animation that you want to bring in, just like we did on the Atom tool, only in this case we're bringing in an FBX. It could be a, any animation that you want. In this case, we're using the same one, but any, any animation that you may have grabbed somewhere. Um, in this case, I'm using FK and IK controls. Um, you really may or may not need to use uh, both. It does take a little bit longer to select both controls, but just to be safe, you may want to select both. FK and IK and then just go ahead and hit that import button and then it's going to run and it's going to import that FBX animation into your scene. And just give it some time and uh, it will uh, bring in that animation on the frame offset that you set. So now that it's done we can select all of our controls and we can now see that just like we stated earlier that all those animations are gone but we do have animation here at frame 300, which is what we wanted. Um, however, you can see that all your animation has now been deleted. So that's one reason why you definitely kind of don't really want to use this, uh, this import tool with the offset. You can also see that it's kind of odd. It brought in some, uh, some it also kind of brought in uh, the, it kind of broke the character as well. So you can kind of see the disadvantages of importing with that mocap option. Now what is good about the import mocap is if you have a blank scene and you're just bringing in one animation, uh, that's great. I would recommend bringing in one animation at a time with this tool and then exporting those animations out with the Atom tool and then importing them in. Okay, so now that we have our animation file saved, we're going to bring in mocap just like we did before. This time I have another idle and I'm going to bring in this alternate idle into the scene. This time I'm not going to do any frame offsetting and that animation is just going to be brought into the scene and then we're going to bring in that animation to our previously saved scene and bring that in and I'm going to kind of show you how you can copy from one scene to the next. So this is in my opinion the best way to uh, kind of utilize this import mocap tool. Uh, by also combining the animations into a previously created animation scene. So there's some popping and some uh, odd things happening with this motion capture. I'm not going to worry about that for cleaning things up at this time. But what I want to do is kind of show you how to copy and paste this animation into uh, the other scene that we had. So kind of a very simple thing. You just basically hit the shift button and then left click the mouse, drag it, all around the timeline to the end of the animation, right click it and then hit copy. And basically what that's going to do is that's going to keep this animation intact and then you're going to basically bring in that animation into the other scene. So I've reopened the file and we have our idle animation and we also have our walk animation. And then I'm going to do the same thing, bookend the file uh, just so we can kind of retain this walk cycle pose. And then on frame 200, I'm going to right click and then click paste. And it's going to paste that idle animation back into the scene. So now we've got all three animations. We've got our idle, we've got our walk, and then we also have this uh, third idle animation. So that's kind of how to combine all three uh, animations into the scene utilizing the uh, GUIs 
of the Unreal tools and kind of cut using copy and pasted uh, kind of hacks through Maya and then also using the Atom tool. That's pretty much going to give you an option to utilize every single uh, method uh, that's necessary whether you're using uh, animations from the Unreal Engine, if you're bringing in animations from another Maya scene. Um, and keep in mind if you do any of the import mocap animation um, it's going to bake all the animation as well and you're not and you're kind of kind of lose any of the animation uh, that you might have that you may have done in terms of not having keys on every frame so that's one great thing about the atom tool as well is that if you are trying to bring in animations that aren't baked uh, you're going to want to use that atom tool so that all of your keyframes are not on every single frame so that's one advantage of the atom tool and really the atom tool is probably the strongest uh, way to import and export your animations into a scene however if you're using motion capture and you're using those unreal uh, packs that you might be getting uh, from the Unreal Store or through Paragon or any of those other assets that you might be buying, you're going to want to utilize this import mocap tool from Unreal. So it's kind of a little bit of both methods, uh, giving you the ability to work with uh, whatever source file you're using, whether it's motion capture or hand keyed animation, so that you can retain. Uh, your spacing in terms of your timelines of where you set your keys so that you're not getting baked frames on every animation. So a mix of both is really powerful and that's uh, kind of a long-winded way to basically combine all of your animations into one timeline and how that's uh, done depending on the workflow and the resources and the source files that you're utilizing uh, for combining your animation into the timeline. Hope that's helpful and uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.